Hey guys, Pumpkin Game Bad today, bringing our video for our Tactical Weapon Series Part 2 here for Modern Warfare 2. So we did the Tactical Weapon Series a lot for Modern Warfare 2019. This one we're going to be covering Part 2 for Modern Warfare 2022. I'll link Part 1 down below in case you guys missed it. And today we're going to be going through a few really nice tactical builds here. I'll show them off, we'll build them up, and then we'll show them off in the guns with to see how they handle. So let's go ahead now and we will back out, go over to our weapons here in the private games. And we're going to start with the first one here being the AUG A3. So this one I really replicated heavily after um, the one I would use a lot in Insurgency Sandstorm. So those of you that played Sandstorm with me or just watched some of those videos or have played it yourself will probably recognize this build. Very similar to what we would use in Sandstorm. So first off for the build, any suppressor really works here. I'm going to be using just the Silent Fire XG6. Going to give a sound suppression, bullet velocity, recoil smoothness and recoil control with the cons there you can see ads speed aim walking speed aiming stability you can obviously probably do um some better suppressors but we i picked something here i wouldn't really take the bump for damage at range but if you want to save on movement something like that you could go with that then we're just going to stay with the base barrel for the a3 any laser here will do i'm going to run the uh vlk laser 7 milliwatt this is essentially the tac laser or the same as the all v for some of the other weapons here Give us the ADS speed, aiming stability, the sprint to fire speed, with the cons being the laser visible to en the enemies when you're ADSing. So you just got to be careful about when and where you ADS. Any optic here, for this one I picked any flip sight. I really like the SZ Vortex 90. It's because a really clean precision sight picture, and it's not really a flip. You're actually adjusting the height of the magnifier there, so it's a little bit easier. I feel like you're probably adjusting it a little bit faster than you would for the hybrid sight. Um, could be wrong about that, but the other thing you may know, notice here is you're actually mounted up a little bit further on the Picatinny. It is mounted on a riser because of the height of that uh, hybrid on there. So you can see here the standard hybrid sight is not mounted on a riser. The Everything's just attached to the top mounted Picatinny. And this one you can see that EOTech is on a riser because of the height difference here for that magnifier. So Pretty cool. This is a 5 times versus a 4.8 for the other magnified optics. Um, really nice sight picture, which you'll see when we get into the gun, to the uh, firing range. Now, for the buttstock option here, again, you can really pick any one you want. I went with a little bit additional recoil control because I'm using a grenade launcher. So, this Bruin HCR 56 stock will give you the recoil control with the cons being the aim down sight speed and the crouch movement speed. So, we'll go ahead and do that. And then, obviously, we're going to run here the... TL-40 fire drag to give, give us that 40 millimeter grenade launcher. So under barrel grenade launcher, cons are aimed on sight speed and movement speed. So that is our final design here for the Insurgency Sandstorm inspired AUG A3. Let's go ahead now, we'll back out and just jump into the gun range and take a look at this thing. So here we go. The inspect, again the camo, really nice and similar to one of the patterns you would get for Sandstorm. That desert hybrid, uh, Camouflage, I believe it was called something along those lines, but it looks relatively similar. I really like this weapon. Again, very aesthetically pleasing. Not the most practical thing for anything outside of multiplayer, but uh, still looks really nice. So you can see, if we let this thing rip, you can see the sight picture there is really clean. Just a clean dot and uh, pretty accurate, honestly. Especially if you wanted to opt for a 40 round magazine, you would get even more ammunition, obviously, to engage these longer targets. Something with this weapon, especially with the base barrel option here, just kind of lacks the damage at range, as you notice here. However, I noticed that the hit detection for not only in uh, in game but here in the firing range is a little bit uh, spotty. So sometimes the bullets will just go right through these targets, and uh, you won't get any hits for it, which is pretty weird. So definitely happens more than you would think. You can see the uh, grenade launcher there. This is a weird grenade launcher because, like, again, with the hit detection, sometimes half the time, like, right there, that's went right through the target. Again, went right through the target. See if we can, like, I don't know how you actually, that's clearly going right through the uh, the target. So there we go. We got an upper torso hit there, but uh, you can see it's kind of strange how it just goes right through the target half the time. So there's the inspect on the grenade launcher. Really cool feature that you can do is for the uh, grenade launcher inspect, but again, really, really nice looking weapon. This is the AUG A3 Insurgency and Stand Sandstorm inspired build. Go to back out and move on to the next one here. We have a Q Honey Badger build. 
a uh, little bit different from the one I showed off the other day. And I have a lot of these builds that I'm going to be getting into because I have a lot of cool Honey Badger builds. This one, uh, really, I think someone in the comments of one of my videos asked if we could make something similar to an LVAW, which was one of my like favorite weapons in Modern Warfare 2019 that I would run. This thing, I think, is relative. Obviously, it's still a Honey Badger, but if you really wanted to make it as close as possible, it would be pretty much this build with that TRX stock on there. However, the handguard, everything like that, just doesn't look anything like this. The receivers, anything, doesn't look like SIG, even with this stock there. So I figured we just make it kind of uh, inspired by the LVAW build here. Uh, but this is obviously a Q Honey Badger. But we're going to run with the base uh, barrel on this one. This it comes with the suppressor, which is really nice. Uh, this one, we're running the point. G3P04. This is again just to the best hit fire uh, laser option here. Then we're going to run with the hybrid firepoint or the Leopold hammer. Again, really fun object to use. Um, I've been having a lot of difficulty with it in Warzone um, because it's not the best on a lot of the weapons given the recoil, which is actually a good thing, I think. Uh, you, you really need to tap fire it, but it, it does have a use. Um, you just got to use it correctly. I have had a lot of great games with this site. So, Leopold Hammer, you get that 4.3 times of magnification. Dual optic toggle, obviously, because you have the 4.3 and then the top mounted delta point. And you have very small sniper glint, aim down sight speed, and aim walking movement sp speed as a con. Then for the grip here, again, I opted for something with a little bit more recoil because of the optic we're using. And this thing is not built for anything outside of, I would say, 35 meters. So this will just help us a little bit more uh, with some of the sustained fire when using the four point uh that four times the the actual magnified optic here i think it was 4.3 or 4.8 so this gives us recoil control the cons being the aiming stability and then we're going to run the 300 blackout armor piercing rounds this is going to give us bullet penetration vehicle damage and the cons being bullet velocity and then uh because this is mainly more of a close this is a close quarters weapon you're not ever going to really want to stretch this thing out so to complement the laser i have a, more of a hip fire uh Grip on this being a Lockwood Precision 40. This is going to give us a hip fire accuracy, recoil steadiness, and the aim walking steadiness with the cons being the aim down sight speed. So this is the final design for the Q Honey Badger inspired, trying to replicate something similar to the uh, LVAW from SIG. And we were running the charcoal camouflage on this, which you get from getting 50 kills with this weapon. So the charcoal camouflage gives us a nice, clean, black look to this, which is just great. So we'll go ahead, jump into the firing range here with this thing. Take a look at it. You can see the inspect. I love seeing those blackout rounds in there in the magazine. Big beefy rounds. Again, close quarters, subsonic rounds. So let's go ahead and let this thing rip hip fire here up close. So again, not made for those ranges right there are stretching it in my opinion. You can definitely get away with it. Um, but not you probably want to tap fire. I have had a couple engagements where I've let this thing rip and gotten them with like the very last bullet, but definitely you want to stay within 30 meters, I would say, is is your best bet with this weapon. Switch it to single fire. Love love the sound of this thing too. If we just reload and just hip fire this thing straight. Those subsonic rounds sound beautiful. So that's the Q Honey Badger. Beautiful, beautiful weapon. Love it with the charcoal there. Really nice tactical build there. And uh, a lot of fun to use and very, very satisfying to get kills with, especially in Warzone. Go ahead back out now. We'll look at our next weapon. We have the M16A3. Again, this one's kind of inspired from like a Battlefield 3 build, but uh, we're using the M4 at base. And the cool thing about this is we can convert this into essentially a fully automatic M16A3. So, we're going to run the high tire 20 inch barrel. This will give us the M16 barrel option for this. So this is going to give us the uh, bullet velocity, damage range, recoil control, and hip fire accuracy as the pros, with the cons being ADS speed, movement speed, and the hip recoil control. Going to go ahead and run any any laser on this thing is fine. I opted for the 1 milliwatt pack just because before I put a camo on it, this is a tan. Uh, Laser attachment, which looks clean, versus the Oli V is black. But again, I put a cam on, so it can't really, doesn't matter here. But go ahead and put whatever one you want on. This one's just going to give you the aim and stability, whereas the Oli V give you a little bit more pros, but the enemy will see that laser. This one here, uh, they will not. So you do, however, you can see the huge increase in stats from the Oli V versus the one milliwatt. So you may want to run with that instead. 
Here we're going to run the Leopold, or excuse me, the uh, Trizicon ACOG with the top mount of Delta, as in, in here in game as the SZ Oscar 9. So we get that 4.8 magnification here and go ahead and jump right back in here because we do get those errors still in the uh, private matches. So you get the 4.8 magnification with that top mount of Delta and the cons are very small sniper glint, aim down sight speed, and aim walking movement speed. We're going to run the M16 buttstock there, the demo precision elite factory for the aiming stability and the recoil control. Cons are the aim down sight speed, cross movement speed, aim walking speed, and the sprint speed, which again, this weapon, you wouldn't really be doing much of that anyway, so um, not a big deal. Um, and then for the uh, grip here, again, we're going to run that classic M4, M16 grip that we see in a lot of weapons here, uh, the Lockwood Precision. Again, same thing we just ran on the Honey Badger. So that's the final design for the M16A3. Great looking weapon, really aesthetically pleasing. Again, for custom for the uh, camouflage here, I'm running. I believe this is the one for the uh, the Kestos 74. You that you get the ripple effect looks really clean on this weapon. So we'll go ahead and back out, jump to the firing range here with the M16A3. I really wish we could get just a base 30 round Stenag mag um, instead of a P mag, windowed P mag like we have here, but. I'm sure we'll probably see that on some blueprints going forward. You do get this the steel stenag mags for the 45 and the 60 rounders, though. So go ahead and let this thing rip. You can see, very accurate. Um, just I typically like to use it in like five to eight round bursts, especially at those longer ranges. Um, and you have that top mount of delta point there, which makes it really, really nice and easy to use at the closer ranges, too. And then these longer ranges, especially in games, I really just like to... Uh, let this thing tap fire because you do get uh, quite a bit of shake on this, as you can see. So if we just let this thing rip, you'll see the, the amount of recoil we're going to get if I just let it go all 20 rounds here. So really, ends up just getting really hard to control, it's trying to compensate for the recoil. So five to eight round bursts, and you have a pretty accurate weapon there. And again, a lot of the attachments we have on this thing are uh, built to help with the recoil. So really nice weapon. Really like this build, and again, I did a similar Warzone build back in uh, Modern Warfare 2019's Warzone, so I have to replicate that here down the road as well. That's the M16A3, and moving on here, we're going to run with the XM2010 and a really nice P90 build. So the XM2010, we're going to use the base barrel on this thing. Bruin Agent 90 Suppressor this is going to give you the damage at range. So the one reason I'm running the base barrel is because none of these other barrels are going to... They're all going to hurt your damage at range. So as a sniper rifle, obviously that's pretty key. You don't want to lose your damage at range. So uh, the base barrel, you don't get that effect. Then the Bruin Agent 90, we're going to increase our damage at range with this suppressor. You get the sound suppression, bullet velocity, damage range, recoil smoothness. Um, Got to run a bipod because it looks beautiful on these sniper rifles. High velocity rounds here for the 338. I believe this is firing Norma Magnum? A 338 Lapua? Yeah, Mag 338 Norma Mag. Okay, so, or excuse me, 300. Uh, 300 rounds, excuse me. So, go ahead and go back over to that. And, oh, it just deleted everything. So, let's go ahead and rebuild it. So, we have the base barrel. And then for the, we're going to run the Brute Agent Suppressor. Under barrel for the bipod. When we we're going to want the uh, high velocity rounds. For the laser option here, uh, anyone's fine. Again, I'm opting just because I like the tan pack, so we'll go with the one milliwatt pack for the aim and stability. Then for the optic here, uh, to, to really spice it up and give it the extra tactical, we're going to run that Raptor FVM40. So this is going to give you the built-in rangefinder, which is a ton of fun to use. It looks really great. So we're going to run bullet drop indicator. We're going to run the 13 times magnification, aim down sight speed, and the cons being the very large sniper glint. So... That's the con with this, is it's a very large sniper glint. However, you can get really good shots at longer ranges. However, it's really not that useful in Warzone yet because um, people are not loading out to a certain distance. So you'll just see kind of like a, the textures aren't loading for them, so they're just kind of like a stick figure sliding around the map. So uh, down the road, this will probably be a little bit more useful. However, I have used it in Warzone, and, and I do have a lot of success with it. But to get those really long, long shots... Um, because of the way things are loaded at long distances, it doesn't really seem possible yet. But that's the XM2010 build. Let's go ahead and jump into the P90 quick before we jump in. So this looks like a pretty crazy P P90, right? But uh, it's actually surprisingly effective. I used to run something very similar in Tarkov, especially uh, in Modern Warfare 2019. 
So we have the uh, FTAC Defense 14 and a half inch barrel on this thing. Going to give us damage at range, bullet velocity, hip fire accuracy, and recoil control. Cons of the ADS speed, hip recoil control, and the movement speed. And then we have the hip shot L720 uh, laser. Again, this is just for hip fire control. You can see the pros and cons there. And again, the Leopold hammer optic. This is something I, I would think nobody would probably ever think to run on this, but it is actually a very steady shooting weapon. You can stretch this thing out to ranges, and I did a lot in Modern Warfare 2019, and uh, you can especially do it in Tarkov, um, and I think it will work just as well here. So 4.3 4 magnification, you have that top line of Delta, which we went over, so we already went over this optic. I'm going to run the armor-piercing rounds on this one. Again, you can really pick whatever options you want. You can also replace that, and then we're going to run the um, Magpul vertical foregrip there, the Op, the, the, yeah, the Op X9 foregrip, and this is going to give us um, for whatever reason, it doesn't want to display the stats there, but it's it's mainly more of a, a close quarters hip fire um, attachment. So you can see here the XM twenty ten, really pretty sniper rifle. I love how it has the uh, even a very large glint, even though it has the honeycomb um, front of the of the optic there, which would which would reduce the glint to like. Nothing, but <laughs> we still get a large glint with it, I guess. Probably from the rangefinder, perhaps. Um, go ahead and back it out to the P90. You can see if we go ahead and inspect this thing, the FN Harrisville P90. Just a really, really nice build right there. So that that is a gorgeous-looking weapon. Let's go ahead and jump into the firing range for these two. These will be the last two for this video. So here's the XM2010. Really great-looking sniper rifle. And then to use that rangefinder, you just uh, zoom in. And here on PlayStation, I'm going to tap um, L3, which is the same as hold my breath. However, I'm not going to hold it. I'm just going, you can see set range there versus hold. So I would set my range at the target. And it's going to adjust the drop based on the distance. Here in this firing range, there's not a uh, target far enough for that. So, but it, when you're out further distances, it'll adjust accordingly. And give you so if I were out to like 300 meters, it might show me the red dot down that uh, mill markers more, and that's where I would want to aim. So, really nice looking weapon. You can see there, you can range it at 28, you can range it at 15, and actually in games the range will show up on this top uh, range finder. So even when you're just scanning around like this, you'll get the range from it. Just doesn't really work in private matches for whatever reason, but that's what would happen in. Uh, in Warzone. So that's the XM2010. Really nice sniper rifle. You don't really see anybody using this uh, at all. So I'm excited to kind of get this leveled up a little bit more and use it in games. And here we have the FN Herstal P90. Again, this is a crazy build, but very, very tactical looking. There's the inspect. Let this thing rip. We have the hip fire. And then we have medium. And then longer ranges there. Horrible recoil control on that one, but again, firing that five point or that five seven by twenty eight, just a great, great weapon. And again, if you're bursting that like three four round bursts at those longer ranges, it'll be really really effective. But these medium ones, you can definitely just kind of let it let it rip, and you have the hip fire there. So that's the FN Herstal. P90. I love the way this build looks, especially with that hammer on there. Very tactical looking. And the hip fire here. Really cool. So that's the P90. XM2010. And it just looks great with this big fat scope on there too. I love I love the way it looks. So that's part two of our tactical weapon series. Let me know which one you like the best. And I'll be having part three up probably sometime next week or during the week. So we have the AUG A3 is what we started with. Then we had the Q Honey Badger. We had the M16A3. We had the XM2010 and the FNP90. So let me know your thoughts. Which one you like the best and why. Um, and I think we had six total weapons today. Um... And we'll pick up with part three going forward. So let me know your favorite weapons. Let me know different ideas for tactical weapons that you would like to see featured in this series. Till next time, this is Buffner Gaming with Tactical Weapons Part 2 for Modern Warfare 2. Till next time, Buffner Gaming, out.